Hi, I'm Liz Bryant. I'm one of the founding members of the PREP Steering Committee. So what is PREP? PREP stands for Planning for Resilience and Emergency Preparedness. PREP is a website, preporegon.org. It's designed to help get families, households, and neighborhoods ready to come through any disaster, from a power outage to a major earthquake, and recover successfully. It includes how to organize your household's emergency plan and supply kit, how to build communication channels with your neighbors to share this information, and how to plan with your neighbors ahead of a disaster for helping each other effectively after disaster. It also has information on how to build longer-term resilience. We provide materials that you can easily print from the website to refer to and share with others. Check back with the website for information in multiple languages to be added soon. And why is PREP important? PREP has what you need to know in one place. It's a do-it-yourself program. You don't need anyone to come and teach you. Also, we need to create a culture of preparedness in our area. In Oregon, we don't have the frequent teachable moments that our neighbors to the north and south do. We didn't even know till the late 80s that Oregon is at risk of a mega quake on the scale of the recent events in Japan and Chile. As a result, there's a lower level of awareness about disaster risks and consequently a low level of disaster readiness in the community. Another important part of PREP is that it conveys a positive message that encourages everyone to think ahead and prepare mentally and practically for what could happen. To keep our families safe, to develop confidence in our ability to cope with any disaster, and to connect with our neighbors, which helps build a resilient community in itself. In fact, it has been shown that the key factor in folks making it through a disaster is friends and neighbors working together. Finally, PREP makes a connection between getting ready for a disaster and building long-term resilience in our households and neighborhoods. Activities like bicycling, gardening, canning, and insulating your home will help get through what could be a lengthy recovery after a major disaster. Alternatively, they can help people cope with other challenges such as economic downturns, energy shocks, or extreme weather conditions that we may face. Hi, I'm Jeremy Leary, also a founding member of the PREP Steering Committee. As for who is behind PREP, it's a grassroots volunteer effort. It sprang from the Transition PDX Community Preparedness Group and is adapted from Seattle Emergency Management's online SNAP program, as well as Washington State's Map Your Neighborhood program. The Steering Committee currently uh, consists of eight volunteers. Most of us are trained members of the Neighborhood Emergency Teams, also known as NET, or the CERT program, which is the same thing outside of Portland. Two of us are instructors in those programs. Some are Red Cross certified and even experience in real life disaster drills. We are gra very grateful for our, our local collaborating partners, Portland Bureau of Emergency Management, Portland Fire and Rescue, Multnomah County Emergency Management, and the Southeast Uplift Neighborhood Coalition. Let's take a tour of the PREP website now, preporegon.org. We will always welcome your comments and questions and we'll show you how to submit them. Liz will take you through the preparedness pages of the site and then I will show you the long-term resiliency section. The home page, which again is at preporegon.org, gives an introduction to what PREP is, why it's important, and who's behind it that's similar to what I talked about earlier. It also introduces the three preparedness parts of PREP that you see in the tabs at the top. Get Prepared, which is about what to know, what to have on hand, and simple ways to get started. Get Organized, make a plan with your neighbors for helping each other after the disaster. Get Confident. Keep current and learn new skills by practicing together. The Get Prepared page is built around a short checklist that has three parts. The first part, Get Informed, teaches drop, cover, and hold, and explains what to do right after an earthquake, including moving immediately to higher ground if you're on the coast. It also points out that people sometimes feel confused after a disaster, so if you've made plans for what to do ahead of time, you'll be able to cope much more easily. 
The next part of the checklist addresses making those plans for different situations, depending on whether you and family members are at home, at work, or in school when a disaster occurs. You'll need a place to meet and an out-of-state phone contact who can help connect you up. Also, it covers hazards that may need fixing around your home. The last part of the checklist deals with starting to gather supplies and equipment that you may need to cope with extended outages of utilities and transportation. Even after a major earthquake, you'll most likely be able to stay in your home, so put together what you would need to make that work for you. Plus, just in case, a go kit for each member of the household in the event you need to evacuate. Right below the checklist, you'll find links to a number of handouts providing a buffet of more detailed information relating to each part of the checklist. I want to call attention to a couple of these. Prepare Your Mind explains that the media stereotypes of disasters that show people in a panic or looting are not very accurate, as generally people respond with care and compassion toward others and show bravery and presence of mind. It also points out that you've already taken the first step toward mental preparedness. People who have actually thought about what a disaster could be like are more likely to survive than people who haven't, even if they haven't made other preparations. Also, the Beyond 72 Hours handout includes several areas to consider and plan for in case of an extended emergency, such as heating, garbage, and sanitation. The other handouts may not all apply to you. You may not have children or pets or a car, so just select what you need and start getting your household ready. At the bottom of this page is a link to the next step, Get Prepared with Your Neighbors. I'll go through the rest of these pages more quickly, but I want to highlight this quote at the top of the Get Prepared with Your Neighbors page. While official help is useful, it is the personal ties among members of a community that determines survival during a disaster and recovery in its aftermath. Building neighborhood connections is one of the most important themes of PrEP. You can start by sharing information on how to get ready for a disaster with your neighbors and also with friends, coworkers, or people from your faith community if you like. You see here a step-by-step -step process for inviting your neighbors and planning and conducting your meeting. There's a selection of key preparedness handouts from those we saw on the last screen that you can print out and copy for your neighbors. And further below, a host kit that includes a simple to follow checklist agenda and sign-in sheet for your meeting, a flyer you can fill in and copy, signs, and an optional bingo icebreaker. After the meeting, we ask if you'll please let us know how it went. On the sidebar at the right, you'll see a link to a page with a few simple questions and a place for any comments you have. There's also a list of upcoming events and a way to sign up for the prep email list for occasional updates and preparedness tips. And this sidebar, which is much the same on every page, is also where you can click on Contact Us to send us any other comments and questions. At the bottom of the page is a link to the next step, Get Organized. The Get Organized part of PrEP is about making a plan with your neighbors ahead of a disaster for helping each other after a disaster. Once you and your neighbors have a good start on household preparedness, you can use the Map Your Neighborhood program to plan together. Map Your Neighborhood helps you learn the nine steps to take immediately after a disaster, identify skills and equipment neighbors have that are helpful in responding to a disaster, and create a neighborhood map showing utility shutoffs and the locations of people who need special care and attention. Map Your Neighborhood comes in a special booklet where you can gather and store the information you collect. It has pages like this for every part of the program. Here's where the skills and equipment inventory goes. There's also a discussion guide that leads you through conducting the meeting, or alternatively, you can get a DVD that presents the meeting for you. The PREP website will list places where you can get the booklets and DVDs. It will also have downloadable resources in case it's not convenient to pick those up. The third part of PREP is Get Confident. This is where you get back together with your neighbors to practice the skills you learned and get organized, welcome new neighbors into the program, and make sure your information is current. Neighborhood drills can be among the most effective and fun ways to build disaster readiness. This page includes several practice drills, from easy to more challenging ones, along with tips on planning and conducting an effective drill. Afterwards, you'll talk about lessons learned and maybe make time to celebrate. 
There is also a resources page on the website with links to more information on different aspects of preparedness, including Portland's NET or Neighborhood Emergency Teams program. We will be adding other resources, including how-to videos, so check back. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Jeremy to talk about the long-term resilience part of PREP. Thanks, Liz. On the subject of resiliency, it is the ability to bounce back from an external event or stress. In our opinion, emergency preparedness, community resiliency, and sustainability are the same thing, just on different timelines. This is where Portland's green scene can tremendously improve how we respond in the wake of a disaster as big as expected with a, a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. There is a multitude of things we can do now to improve quality of life, reduce long-term costs, and make community disaster response effective through actions that make sense for you and your household on a day-to-day -day basis. Some examples of this are food buying clubs, well-insulated houses, rainwater catchment systems, bicycles, vegetable gardens, canning, fruit and nut trees, solar, electric, or hot water panels, all could be extremely effective in a recovery phase after a large-scale disaster. The wrinkle is we need to be thinking through all of these in the context of a disaster. A problem of sorts is we don't have teachable moments in the form of major disasters very often here in the Portland area. So please be thinking how on a day-to-day -day basis life would work if power was out or sporadic for a week or longer. Not only can these sustainability activities make, it, make things easier as we transition to recovery phase after disaster, but you can make your household more secure in the event of job loss, energy price spikes, or food price spikes. There have been plenty of large-scale disasters in the news the last few years. And if there is anything that we learned from the disaster caused by Hurricane Katrina is that we cannot safely sit back and wait for rescue. In fact, the more that we ready our households and our neighborhoods, the better off we will be as individuals, families, and a community. Prep Oregon's section on long-term resiliency, we currently have several subsections about common sustainability topics which are particularly helpful after a disaster. All of these are going to be improved as our volunteers have time or will be um, improved from community suggestions. There is a wealth of information on these topics on the internet and at the library. At PrepOregon.org, we, we are mainly interested in providing an overview. Later, we'll be adding more examples and suggestions. I would also point to our calendar, which will be featuring the more notable events on resiliency and preparedness in our area. In closing, we want to say that we hope you find the PREP effort useful uh, in getting your family and your household ready for absolutely anything. The community needs uh, to get everyone involved to make our region disaster ready. As we said earlier, the key to, for everyone making it through a disaster is friends and neighbors working together. We look forward to working to improve PREP and adapting it to the community's needs. Thanks.